Hello, my name is Joe Hildreth and welcome to episode 4 of CNC for the Home Hobbyist. In this episode I'll show you how to get a copy of Linux CNC from the LinuxCNC.org website and how to burn this image to a bootable CD or USB thumb drive using software supplied with or available to any recent version of Windows. The bootable media that we create in this video will be used to install the Linux CNC controller on a machine that we plan to use for that purpose. Remember, I am neither a machinist, engineer, nor teacher, but a home hobbyist that would like to share my experience with CNC machines for the home shop. Hopefully, over time I can present enough material to prevent new folks entering the hobby from some of the pitfalls that I've encountered. With that out of the way, let's get started. Okay, so as you recall, there's two different ways of downloading Linux CNC uh, controller. Uh, both uh, are mentioned if you go to the LinuxCNC.org website, click on download, and these are detailed here. So um, the first way, recall, is just to download the um, uh, live CD using the web browser by clicking this link. And we're going to do this, but uh, and we're going to save this file. And then while it's downloading, uh, I just want to mention that uh, you know doing uh, downloading from a web browser um, uh, is not really the best practice because you know you can it can corrupt the file a little bit. So to um, check to make sure that the file that we downloaded um, is the uh, the actual file that's stored up on the server verbatim, we're going to run a checksum. So, but before I get into all that, I do want to mention that uh, I'm running Windows 7 Pro. Uh, there's a lot of different versions of Windows out there. It's slightly different from version to version. And the other side of the coin is I don't know uh, at what level of experience uh, the user that's watching this video is attempting to do this uh, where they're at. So you don't know if they're kind of a new computer user uh, or are really comfortable and done everything under the sun. So I'm going to take this approach from a, a new user point of view to try to help out uh, the most number of people that I can. And another thing that I want to mention about Windows, uh, now I'm primarily a Linux user and Linux provides a lot of tools uh, that are free and easily to easy to install or already pre-installed on the system. Where Windows, um, you know, it's not you know, Windows isn't uh, as nice to the user, in my opinion. Um, you have to go out and find software and, and do that and, and install it and try it out and, and just, I don't know. I just think it's kind of a pain. But I've uh, hopefully worked out all the kinks and snags and we'll get from there. So uh, I'll uh, speed this part of the video up and when this is done, I'll get right back to you. Okay, so the uh, ISO's uh, uh, download has completed. We're going to go to open the folder. We can see it here. Um, ISO file, uh, Linux CNC 2.7 uh, Wheezy. Now, like I said, we need to uh, assure that um, the file that we've downloaded, you know, is uh, not has not been corrupt or damaged in any way. So, in order to do that, we're going to uh, need to be able to run a checksum. And uh, a checksum, essentially what it does is it goes through and it, it uh, examines a file and then generates a unique number uh, based on that file. And then the publisher of that um, software or that image or whatever, they will also publish a number, uh, that, that corresponding number. So when you run the checksum on the file and the numbers match from the publishers, then you know that you got the, the same file. So if we look here where it says verify the image, you see that you, we can do an MD5 checksum or we can do a SHA-256 checksum. Okay, So when you run these, either one, it doesn't matter which, uh, it will spit out a number. And if the number it spits out matches, then uh, we know that we have a, a, a good download. So um, Windows does not come with a checksum installed. You have to download one. And um, to do this, we're going to open up a browser tab, and we are going to go to https colon slash slash support dot microsoft dot com slash en dash us for English US slash help slash and then we're going to put this in this number 
2.290. So this is a Microsoft case number because people have said, hey, I need to be able to see what the, uh, I need to be able to do a checksum. So they've released one. And theirs is called File Checksum Integrity Verifier Utility. That, my friend, is a mouthful. So um, what we're going to do uh, to try to make this as simple as possible, we're going to open up our file browser here. And then we're going to go to the computer and the C drive, and we're going to create a folder that we're going to download this um, software to, and we're going to call it uh, FCIV, right? Because that's sort of the initials of the software. And then we're going to come back to our web page, and if we scroll down the web page, we can see that uh, we can download the file here. So I'm going to hit download. And then instead of saving, I'm going to say save as, right? This would give me an opportunity to change the name if I wanted to. But what I want to do is save it to the FCIV folder that I just created. So I'll click on C, C drive, and then double click the folder that I just created and hit save. So once it's, uh, once it's downloaded, um, we need to uh, open that folder. Okay, and we're going to double click on this file so that it can extract. And then um, the system here is just asking me, do I want to run this file because, um, you know, can make changes to the system. I'm going to say yes. So run. There's a user agreement. I'll say yes to that. And now it wants to know where do you want me to place the extracted files. So I'm just going to hit browse. And we're going to come up here to the C drive FCIV. We're going to put them in the same folder that we downloaded the file. And then we're going to hit OK. So now we're told that the extraction is complete. And if we look in our FCIV folder, we see the FCIV application and a README file which talks about how it, uh, how it works. So now, to check the um, MD5 sum of this file, we're going to use this application to do it. But this is not a, a graphical application. We're going to have to do this from uh, a command prompt. And to do that, Oops, sorry about that. Uh, to do that, we're going to hit the Windows button, and then in the search box here, we're going to type in CMD, that's Charlie Mother Delta, and we're going to hit Enter, and then we get this black screen that pops up. Now, if you're an old-time computer user and familiar with DOS, this is really similar, and uh, this is where we're going to do the checksum for, or we're going to run this application. So what we're going to do now is we're going to change the directory to downloads, right? And we'll do a directory here and we'll see here's our linux-2.7-wheezy.iso. This is the file that we downloaded. So to check this, we're going to enter the command. We're going to say c colon backslash fciv, because remember that's the folder that we created, backslash fciv.exe. Okay, that's the that's the program that we want to run. Okay, and then we want to give it the name of the file that we want to check, which in this case is Linux CNC-2.7. So I'm going to hit Linux, and then I'm just going to hit Tab, and then that fills in the rest of the line for me. And I'm going to press Enter. So you see that it's uh, calculating a checksum, and it says, okay, well by default this here checks the MD5 sum. So it prints out this uh, giant number here, 978CA, blah, 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 blah. And if we come back over here to the Linux CNC web page and compare our numbers, the MD5 sum, 978CA074, 978CA074. And if we compare all these and we see that they match, we're in good shape. We got a good we got a good download uh, that we're working with. We don't have to worry about any corruption or anything from the browser. And from here, uh, we can burn the uh, you know burn our uh, bootable DVD, or we can um, we can uh, you know make a thumb drive or whatever. Uh, now, just because I like to be complete here, if you don't think you're ever going to use this uh, FCIV software again you know you can you can remove it but in our case uh, to remove it all we have to do is delete this FCIV folder that we created I'm just gonna highlight it hit shift delete way that we could download it using the browser downloading the file and then comparing the checksum now recall that there's a second way by using a utility called Zsync now Zsync will download a file and check the integrity for uh, of the file for you so that's the approach that we're going to take now. So I'm going to come over here to downloads and I'll delete my copy 
that I've downloaded already, and we'll just do this again. So Z-Sync, as you recall, was uh, if you watched the Linux version of the uh, tutorial, it was pretty easy to install. So Windows, we have to do um, just a little bit more. Okay, so if we look here on the uh, download page of Linux CNC, we see Z-Sync in Windows, and if we click on this link here, this will take us to assembla.com Z-Sync Windows, and will show us a number, oh, hang on a second, let me go back here, I want to open this in a new tab, and will show us a number of files that are available, and we'll notice two things, that uh, it looks like there's 32-bit and 64-bit versions, and there's several versions here, so what, what do we get? Well, to see what um, your computer is, if I click on Windows and right-click my computer and select Properties, I can take a look here, and then under the system, I can see here that I'm running a 64-bit operating system. I don't know if you can see that down here. So I know that I'm, I would prefer to have 64-bit. Now, just because you have a 64-bit doesn't mean you have to run 64-bit software. You can run 32-bit. 64-bit software really comes into play when you have more than 4 gigabytes of memory. So um, the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to look in this list here and say, okay, well, I'm seeing um, uh, a 6.2, 4, 3, and 2 for 64-bit and, and the same for 32-bit. I'm going to download the newest version that I can for my system, and I'm, which is 6.2.4, and uh, I'm going to download the 64-bit. So I'm going to click this link, and I'm going to say Save. And then while that's saving, I want to point out that you notice that these have a 7Z extension. Now, computers, typically if we have a lot of files that we want to put into one file or very large files that we want to try to make smaller, we compress them. And we compress them with utilities like RAR or PKZIP or something like that. Well, 7Z is a compression utility, and unfortunately... Uh, Windows does not recognize it natively. So if I open the folder here after we've downloaded Z-Sync for Windows, use the 7Z, it, it doesn't, I'm going to right click it, it doesn't know what to open it up with. Okay, so we're going to have to take a slight detour here. And we're going to have to download a utility called 7-Zip in order to be able to extract this. So I'm going to open up another browser tab. And I want to go to HTTPS colon slash slash www dot seven dash zip dot org and this is the home page of the seven zip software and again you notice that we have a 32-bit version and a 64-bit version and we can look at our computer to see what version of the soft Windows software we're running whether if it's 32 or 64 and we can download the appropriate one so I'm going to download the 64-bit for my machine and I'm going to hit save. And now that it's done, I'm going to hit open folder. So now I have two files here. We have our Z-Sync file with Z-Zip, and then we have the, uh, our, I'm sorry, 7-Zip, and then we have the 7-Zip install file. So I need to install 7-Zip in order to extract this file. So I'm going to double click the 7-Zip installer, tell it to run. Going into program file, 7-Zip is fine, and tell it to install. And uh, here it tells me that it is installed, so I can hit close. So now, uh, with 7-Zip installed, I can extract this file here. So I'm going to right-click the file and say 7-Zip extract here. And when I do that, I see that it creates the file Z-Sync, right? That, that's the file that we want to uh, download, um, the uh, Linux CNC command. Now again, just like the file checking software, this is not a graphical user file. This is a command line tool. So we're going to open up a command prompt. Start CMD, Charlie Mother Delta, hit enter. Opens up our little black window. And then we want to go into our downloads folder. So we're going to change directory CD to downloads Okay, and hit enter. And if I do a directory here, a directory listing, I see there's Z-Sync XE. There's my compressed file and the file that we downloaded to install 7-Zip and whatnot. So now 
uh, if we look on the Linux CNC site, we see that the command to download the ISO to the computer using Zsync is Zsync, and then the URL to the file with the file name and .zsync on the end. So having that up there where we can see it, we're going to exact we're going to type that in. So Zsync space HTTP colon slash slash www.linuxcnc.org slash linuxcnc dash 2.7 dash wheezy dot iso dot zsync now, assuming that I didn't fat finger anything there and got this typed in right, I press enter and the computer contacts, looks at the file and see how, you know, how large the file is and then starts downloading it. And then as it downloads, it gives us progress here. And then when this progress is done, it will check the checksum of the file to make sure it is what it was told that it was and if everything's good it will report back so I'll speed this part of the video up until we're done okay so Zsync tells us this that it has downloaded the entire file and has verified the download and that the checksum matches and it's, everything is okay so at this point we know that we have a good copy of Linux CNC the, the ISO and if we come over here and take a look at our downloads folder, we will see there it is, Linux CNC 2.7 Wheezy, the ISO file. Now, um, you know, in Linux, it's, it's so easy to install um, uh, Zsync. You know, you just you just install it and go, and you're and you're good, and it's quicker. But in this case, you know, in either either way in Windows, it doesn't really, I guess, matter which way you download Linux CNC, although I would think Zsync would be the safer alternative because if for some reason you download the file with the browser and you get um, you know you get a file corruption that, that doesn't match you have to start the download all over again where Zsync checks data as it comes through against a checksum as each piece comes through and then checks the thing as a whole and then if there's a piece that's corrupt it goes back and grabs just those pieces that it needs so in in the long term could save you uh, some time and energy so now that uh, we have a a good copy of the ISO either downloading through the browser or downloading with Zsync um, we can uh, proceed to burn in our disk now um, just to be thorough if if you don't think you'll ever use Zsync again and you want to get rid of it all you have to do is simply delete the Zsync files that we downloaded and if you don't feel like you'll ever use 7-zip again although I'd kinda of recommend keeping it, it is a great archiver uh, you, can you can delete the file that you downloaded from your downloads folder uh, but you'll have to go to the control panel to uninstall and if you've never done that as start control panel and then by default I think it shows category you can hit uninstall program under programs and then if, there you see 7-zip and I can hit uninstall but I think I'm gonna keep it so let me close off some of these windows and we'll get started here on the next part All right, so now that we've downloaded the ISO file, we need to concentrate on burning the uh, ISO to a DVD. So now, for those of you who aren't familiar, an ISO or an IMG file are typically file systems or uh, that are exist on a hard disk or exist on a uh, on a DVD uh, that has been compressed into one file so that they can be transported across the network and then burned to another DVD or hard disk or whatever so um, to, in order to do this now depending on the version of Windows you got you know, Windows may be, able, may be able to do it natively and if that's the case we can find out by right clicking on the ISO file remember it's in our downloads file and I say open with 
and then here we see Windows Disk Image Burner. And if I click that, it will um, you select your of course we've already selected the image file. This is the Wheezy ISO here, and your burner. You'll stick in a uh, disk. Check this box here that says Verify Disk After Burning, and hit Burn. And so it will write the contents of the file to the disk, and it will go back and verify that what it's written to the disk is actually the same as the file um, on your computer, and, and if all's good, it'll let you know, and then that's all it's to it. But not uh, all versions of Windows have that utility available, and not all versions of Windows have uh, any CD authoring software available on them. You have to get that separate. So let's uh, let's do just that. So a pretty simple free CD burning uh, tool available is called Infra Recorder, and we can go to Infra Recorder dot org and get it for free so when we open up the site and we look over here on the right hand side there's a download page we can hit download and then remember we have either a 32-bit or 64-bit operating system now I realize it says Windows 2000 XB Vista 7 but this will probably work on uh, 8 or 10, but then again, 8 or 10 probably has the option of burning an image to, uh, uh, image to disk for you anyway. So I'm going to grab the 64-bit version of the installer, and I'm going to save it. And then, you know, when we save something um, from the uh, you know, from the web browser, it goes into our downloads directory. So there it is, IR053x64, so that's Infra Recorder. So I'll have to launch this file and install it. So, so I double click it and select run and next accept the agreement next uh, going to the infra recorder folder is just fine next and install so well, we'll just wait for it to install okay so the install is finished and we can hit finish alright so now that we have some CD authoring software let's burn this file to a to a uh, CD. So I'm going to hit Windows and then I should see Infra Recorder in, in my All Programs files. So I can launch it from there. And Infra Recorder pops up with a menu saying, hey, what kind of disk do you want? You can do data disks, audio disks, videos, etc. We're interested in the image. So we're going to click Write Image down here at the bottom. And here we will select our image file that we want to. And by default, it's opened up in Downloads. Uh, so if it doesn't open up in Downloads, browse to where you've saved the file. And then select the image file, okay, and then hit Open. And then at this point, um, you would put in your disk, wait for it to recognize your disk, and then when it did, the OK button will highlight. Hit OK, and it will burn the image for you. And then when it's done, um, the disk will pop out, and you can close all of that down, and, and there you have it. Simple as that. And, um, you know, hang on to the disk uh, because we're going to use this in the uh, probably the next video where we'll actually install uh, um, Linux CNC onto the computer that we're going to use for our controller. So now, mentioning the computer that we're going to use as a controller, what if it doesn't have a DVD reader? Okay, well, if that's the case, we have another option. We can create a bootable thumb drive or bootable flash drive or whatever you want to call them. They're called all kinds of things. Um, so you'll want to get one that's, uh, you know, this this file is 1.1 gig. You'll probably want to at least get a 4 gig uh, to use that. But then again, Windows does not have any built-in mechanism for burning and creating uh, bootable flash disks. So in order to do that, we're going to have to go get another piece of software. So I'm going to open up browser window here, and I'm going to go to https colon slash slash www.pendrivelinux.com slash universal dash USB dash installer dash easy dash as 
dash one dash two dash three. I don't I don't make the names, guys. All right, so when we go to this page, um, if you get uh, I'm just going to tell it to show all content, but anyway, if we scroll down the page, about uh, looks like a little over halfway down, we'll see this um, button here that says Download UUI. So this is what we want, so we'll click that, and then we'll save this file to our Downloads folder. And when it's complete, we can open up our Downloads folder, and we see Universal USB Installer. Now this is just an application. It doesn't actually have to be installed. So to run it, we're just going to double click it. Oh, hang on a minute. I'm going to cancel this. So here's something else that I uh, need to know. When you're going to make a, a use this utility to burn a, um, uh, a flash drive, uh, you'll want to make sure that you plug the flash drive into the computer first because the computer has to recognize the flash drive before, um, uh, before it will be recognized in the software. So I'm going to plug in a flash drive. Now, unfortunately, mine's too small to write on, uh, but it's just one that I had handy. All right, and then when this removable disk, hey, what do you want to open it up? But take note here that this is removable disk G. That's what Windows is calling it, disk G. All right, so I'm going to close this. Now I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to launch the universal USB installer. I'm going to tell it to run. Yes, I agree, as if I had a choice. All right, so uh, this is a three-step program, right? So the first thing we want to do is select the distribution from the drop-down box on your USB, and you're going to notice there's a bazillion things listed here. Well, the whole idea behind this little USB installer is to create U uh, Linux USB uh, startup disks, okay? But unfortunately, Linux CNC is not in this list. But if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, there's a, 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 a subject title here that says try to use an unsupported ISO. And we're going to say try unlisted Linux ISO. We're going to select that. Okay, and then finally we're going to browse to get our ISO. And remember that's in the downloads folder. I'll select Linux CNC 2.7 Wheezy and hit open. And then finally it wants the. Uh, drive letter of the uh, USB that we're going to use. So remember we just stuck it in. Now this is complaining it doesn't have enough drive space. But anyway, you would select what you want and then hit create. Okay. And then it will it will create a bootable flash drive. And when it's done, you're done. So at this point, um, you have uh, media that should be bootable, whether if it's a flash drive or if it's a, um, a DVD. We're going to use this media um, to uh, create our Linux CNC controller, and we've showed how to do this on both Windows and Linux. Now, I am looking for a volunteer out here, uh, out there that would be willing to make uh, a video similar to this one or the or the Linux one that I made using the same sort of processes to create a bootable uh, DVD or bootable flash drive on uh, Mac. So that I just think that would be handy uh, because I realize that uh, uh, you know people who um, may want to get into uh, CNC in their shop they may ne they may not necessarily be you know computer gurus so I'm trying to keep this as simple and as straightforward and, and, and easy as I can and again if you have questions uh, feel free to uh, post down below and, and I'll answer those and I'm pretty pretty prompt about uh, answering questions so other than that uh, thank you so much for taking your time uh, to watch these videos uh, for CNC for the home workshop. I realize that they probably are not coming out as fast as some people want, but uh, my time is limited and I have a lot of things on my plate. So I apologize, but I will continue to work on them and get them out as uh, soon as I can. The next uh, CNC video that I produce will probably be uh, we'll talk about the requirements for the computer that you're going to use for your controller and installing Linux CNC on the controller. And if those don't take too long, we might uh, talk about you know upgrading the software and stuff on your on your Linux CNC controller and things like that. Uh, we have a million uh, things to talk about when it comes to CNC. It's a huge topic. Hang with me, guys, and given enough time, uh, I think I, I got some stuff that uh, will help you learn it. So other than that, thanks for taking the time to watch. Please like, subscribe, uh, and share if these are helpful or if you think they're helpful to somebody else. And other than that, have a blessed day.